Hi everybody, it's Bob Brown. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, season's greetings, and compliments of the season. This was recorded on December 20th, 2017. So we're going to look at a couple things. And I will give a couple hypotheses on what we're experiencing here with the UFO ex experience that the Pentagon's program has been released and what the U.S. Navy encountered. So we're going to switch over to scene here, the scene here. And we're going to go, and this is the raw footage of the U.S. Navy encounter in 2012 of a UFO object. And we'll take this one here. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. Well, it goes. Oh, it's like an ice cream truck. Yeah, but it's not going to go against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Look at that thing, dude. So we saw there that the, the it actually rotated. Um, so so that's kind of interesting. So so now there's I think the study of UFOs has suddenly gone into another if you pardon the expression another dimension because what we're now seeing is that a lot of people who normally would be considered uh, skeptics of UFOs are now coming out. CBS News had that, the Young Turks had it. Uh, those of us who have studied UFOs are pretty much our whole life, we're not too surprised. Now I want to kind of juxtapose what happened in 2012 to an event that happened in 1980 in Rendlesham, England with the U.S. Air Force. And if you're not familiar with this, I'll, I'll go to Wikipedia page. Let's go over to that scene. And on the Wikipedia page, if you look up the Rendlesham Forest incident, uh, this was a, at an RAF, RAF uh, base in the, in the UK, and it was basically manned uh, by also by U.S. Air Force personnel. And the, the, the article is disputed. The neutrality of this article is dis disputed. But let's just go with it for a minute. And I'll read it real quick. In late night, December 1980, there was a series of reported sightings of unexplained lights near Rendlesham Forest, Suff Suffolk, England, which has been linked with claims of UFO landings. The events occurred just outside the RAF Woodbridge, which was used at that time by the U.S. Air Force. USA, USAF personnel, including Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt, claimed to see the things described as a UFO sighting. The occurrence of the most famous of claim UFO events that have happened in the United Kingdom. And there was a History Channel did a series uh, on this, on the Rendlesham Forest incident. And we're going to go to an incident here. Now this, in this scene, we're going to see um, the Jim Penniston. He was, uh, he was a USA Air Force member who encountered these objects. And I think you're going to see a correlation here pretty quickly between what the U.S. Navy may have encountered in 2012, again this is just speculation and hypothesis, and what the U.S. Air Force encountered in 1980. So let's go with what uh, happened here. During the course of Jim Penniston's 1994 regression, he recalled being interrogated by two mysterious men. He would have to wait eight long years to discover their identity. He's not under a hypnotic state. This uh, hypnosis on the tape is uh, that was debriefed by DSA, which uh, made no sense at the time to me. And when the LOD files came out, they mentioned DSA. I didn't even know it was a real agency. DSA stands for Defense Secretariat 8. That was essentially the civilian division within the Air Force side of the Ministry of Defense that had the lead on UFO investigations. Could these agents have been the infamous men in black? The men in black are for real. I'm convinced from my studies that uh, the Air Force Office of Special Investigations sen sends out counterintelligence investigators to deal with UFO witnesses. And I know many of people who've had quite alarming experiences with them.
So now panels, we're going to do another. We're going to go on with. Uh, so under the uh, under this hypnosis, later on in the videos, he describes that he was that he believed that the objects that were that the U.S. Air Force had encountered were, as they said, quote unquote, they were us. So meaning that this was some type of hyper advanced technology, potentially from the future or an alternate timeline. Um, so here's a couple hypotheses. So what we might be experiencing here, of course, we could be experiencing a, a mass hallucination. Uh, it could be the, the technology aboard the, the Navy fighter craft malfunction. It could be that the fighter pilot was misinterpreting a natural phenomena. But from the turning of the object, I think we could probably rule that out, that we're seeing some type of uh, intelligently controlled uh, device or craft. Um, if we go back to it, we can clearly see, During the course of gym you know, that there's something going on here. So the Rendlesham team also encountered a black object like this. Video captured by U.S. Navy pilots offers an inside look at. That's kind of sorry. That's kind of this is better. Now, if you look at the Rendlesham Force incident, if you look. When what they what they encountered was they encountered uh, these black smooth objects that were hovering off the ground. They were just hovering off the ground, and if we look at this closely, oh my God. as U.S. this is U.S. Navy, black object. Oh, okay, dude. It's got this halo. So it's turning now. So it's rotating. So I have a, a hypothesis. I have no proof of this. But we may be, the Rendlesham incident and the U.S. Navy's incident, they actually might be one and the same object. If this object actually could time travel, this object can move through time, when the U.S. Air Force encountered the Rendlesham object. Let's see if we can find a... Uh, there's, a there's a full documentary here of it. Uh, there's all kinds of videos on the Rendlesham uh, event. So here's kind of a... You saw like a little representation there of the, of the object that someone in Great Britain had built and if you look at this object here, now I, I can't say they're, they're, they're identical because we don't know if they are, but it's possible because U.S. Air Force personnel under hypnosis started thinking, they were describing that these objects were uh, U.S. government or human origin. So they could be something from the future. Uh, I've re done research on this and what some theorists talk about what we call cybernetic singularity. Now cybernetic singularity is basically the concept that uh, computers are going to become uh, intelligent in the very near future. So when that happens, uh, we could have an intelligent, sentient uh, system maybe based on quantum computing technology. And this quantum computing technology would in fact, um, it, would, it would be able to transcend different quantum states of reality. And if it could do that, it, it, I'm just hypothesizing here. This thing could actually look down different timelines. It could, it could, it, it's it, the very it's one of the ideas of quantum physics is the act of observing something can can change its course. So if we had a sentient, conscious uh, quantum computer that could look down myriad uh, billions of timelines. These myriad of billions of timelines could potentially come into existence. Pure speculation, pure science fiction, I get that. But with the U.S. Navy's encounter here, these ideas are not as far-fetched as they used to be. You know, they are, they are now uh, coming into the realm of, you know, this, the speculation may have something here. Because if this object is some type of probe from the future, if it's a U.S. government project, you know, two, three hundred years in the future, and it's going along the timeline, then it might appeared in 1980 England. It could appear in 2012 when the uh, 
U.S. Navy encountered it. Uh, they encountered it off. Uh, there, this is the Navy F.A. 18 fighter jets from the aircraft carrier Nimitz off the coast of San Diego in 2004. So it's possible as things traveling through time. It's some type of time probe. It's a time machine. It's a time scanner. It's an object going through time. Um, it could be something from a sentient computer in the future. I, I think those ideas may be more likely and more palatable to people than it's an alien. I mean, this, the simple answer is an alien, but I think we might be dealing with some type of advanced human technology, maybe from our own future being sent back by, like I said, a sentient computer, the U.S. government, the U.S. military, or a world government in the future that we don't understand. And they're sending it back for some reason to determine things. One hypothesis that I also have is that we may be experiencing some type of tampering with the timelines. Um, a cybernetic computer may be adjusting things. The cybernetic intelligence in the future, say it's 10, 12, 20, 50, 100 years in the future, it may be altering the timeline to actually alter it, its genesis point. It may be altering the timeline to ensure that it does survive, that nothing tampers. It's kind of like the Terminator paradox, right? The Terminator paradox from with Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie, you know, they go back in time to try to stop the the, the genesis of the terminator of the com sentient computer. <clears throat> so we may be seeing something. We may be seeing patrols along the timeline. We may see the, the genesis of cybernetic intelligence and that it is actually sending these probes back in time. This could be a government project. This could be faulty technology. We don't know. But my instinct tells me that we're dealing with some type of hyper advanced human technology and cybernetic intelligent technology in the future. I'm making this video now what appears to me to be the present, but it may not be the present. It may be to something else along the timeline. This is long in the past. You know, I'm long dead, and even though I think I'm alive now. And that these timelines, these quantum timelines, are being scanned by this cybernetic singularity of the future. And it's trying to to ensure that it will in fact exist, it won't not exist. That doesn't mean it's necessarily evil, it doesn't mean it's benevolent either, but it just means it exists. Noam Chomsky doesn't believe that cybernetic intelligence uh, in fact can happen. He is convinced that cybernetic intelligence is not possible. So you have to look at Noam Chomsky's theories and they are very compelling to why machines will never gain human levels of intelligence. I, on the other hand, think that they will gain human level intelligence and surplant human intelligence because of quantum computing and the alternate states of, consci of consciousness that a sentient computer could have in different quantum states. Our brain it has somewhat quantum capabilities with it as well, but an infinitely intelligent cybernetic computer that could transcend cybernetic timelines by quantum um, uh, manipulation would be infinitely powerful and it could be sending these probes back in time to gain you know information. One of the things that I do in my doctoral program is I try to understand how time affects things. I'm a business person but I like to look at digital images and how do you mine that data from the past and get information out of that usable information you know like the NSA does when they look at pictures. One thing I do is very simplistic, but I look at barcodes and pictures around me so that you can collect inventory information. Very mundane, but very powerful for a business. So I, I'm very attuned to the effects of time, and I think time tampering is a real possibility that we're dealing with. That we could be dealing with some type of time tampering for good or ill, we don't know. But these types of objects that we see they may be, they simply may be probes from the future, the cybernetic intelligence of the future, the U.S. government of the future, I guess aliens of the future, are sending these back to collect data. The reason I'm more prone to think this is human intelligence is because it, it the, the UFO phenomena always seems to be very, very, very cautious. It's like they don't want to know what's going on. Well, if if this was something from the future, if this was a future 
tech, uh, civilization going back into its own past, it would have to be infinitely careful because any alteration in the timeline or timelines could cause a ripple effect that could destroy that civilization. You know, if John F. Kennedy, like if you read Stephen King's book, uh, you know, 11, 22, uh, 63, if John F. Kennedy had been killed, then uh, Stephen King has a postulation of a timeline that Wallace becomes president and the United States gets embroiled in war and destruction and all that. And so the, the old story of the tampering of the timeline is a well-known science fiction uh, section. So that could be explained why the UFOs appear at certain intervals so that, and they appear where it's very difficult to get them on camera. Because in the future, they could scan like I do. I, I do primitive scanning of pictures and digital pictures looking for uh, barcodes to collect data. They could look in the future at these myriad of UFO you know, incidents, of YouTube videos. They, there's billions and billions of digital imagery being created now. So a future civilization ha has at its disposal all this information. So they pretty much know where they could go and safely operate without being intercepted by accident and altering the timeline. In this case, um, it may be they, this event occurred and that they knew it occurred or they had to make it occur. Maybe they knew something was happening. But something tells me that the Rendlesham Forest incident, the Rendlesham Forest incident and this incident are somehow connected. I'm not certain how, but it seems if you look at the objects, if you watch the Rendlesham Forest uh, UFO documentary um, that the History Channel had, you can see that the U.S. Air Force personnel seemed to think this was some hyper-advanced uh, human uh, technology that they were encountering in 1980, and the U.S. Navy here is now encountering, you know, the U.S. Navy is encountering, uh, you know, high-speed object uh, that that they can't explain, and it looks like a saucer shape, <coughs> as you can see here. It definitely looks saucer shape. It's rotating. The object was rotating at high speed, high velocity. If you watch the interview of the U.S. Navy pilot, you'll see that he, he says, "Hey, aircraft just can't operate this way." So this is this goes back to the World War II Foo Fighters, the UFO incidents that we had, Project Blue Book, and now we have this. But it seems that these seem to be some type of time probes. Uh, they're trying to document the past. Uh, they're trying. They're moving through time to collect data, information, microbes. Who knows what they're doing? But they could also be tampering with the timeline. So my theory, one of my hypotheses is we may be, we may have to set up methodologies to ensure that the timeline is not being tampered with, or if it is being tampered with, somehow we know it was tampered with. I have no idea how you would do that because if the timeline was tampered, your consciousness would be tampered along with it, and you would not even remember setting up these uh, these tests. There's a uh, I think there's an a Star Star Trek the new Next Generation that has something like this where they encounter a phenomena where they start detecting that there's clues. I think that was the episode called Clues, where things aren't normal and they start investigating all these clues and they find out, hey, wait a minute, our memories have been completely altered because they had this uh, dangerous encounter with an alien species and they had to have all be have their memories erased so that the alien species was not because if the alien species thought it was discovered by the Federation it was going to destroy the Enterprise so they had to make this compromise where data the computer the Android was kind of the keeper of this knowledge that the Enterprise had encountered this alien life form and that the crew of the Enterprise with the exception of data was in fact had their memory erased and one of the problems was data's android mind brain couldn't be altered by the alien technology so they, they were like well we have no choice we have to destroy the enterprise and they make this bargain with the aliens to not destroy the enterprise because everyone has their memory erased so we may be so that star trek episode is what sticks in my mind that we may be dealing with something tampering with timelines tampering with with world memory not just mine or yours but world amnesia effects that things are changing and being altered so we don't know we don't know 
and maybe this cybernetic intelligence or maybe this all this uh, future advanced human civilization like in the movie interstellar hyper advanced human technology and hyper advanced human uh, civilization is actually going back into the past for some reason maybe it wants to tweak the timeline to to benefit themselves we don't really understand time technology but time technology not just time travel if a, an alien a, 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 a hyper advanced human intelligence in the future if they said you know if we altered the timeline here here and here all this other marvelous things would occur and we would have you know more resources less war better timelines uh, better scientific discoveries better mental capacity we don't know so these are my musings over many years of, of the UFO phenomena is it alien it could be is it all hallucination it could be I tend to lean to the fact my my lean is that this is more like interstellar or like this is more like a hyper advanced human intelligence maybe it's a hundred years in the future 200 200,000 I, I don't know and that it's altering the timeline somehow for certain events this could also be a cybernetic singularity event that happens 12 years in the future and it's with with uh, with quantum technology it can look down quantum timelines and as we one theory of quantum physics is by uh, looking at an object you actually change the object or you change the outcome it's the it's the photon experiment of the split photon by observing the photon goes through one part of the s slit or the other so it's, so the light is both a particle and a wave time may be like that as well maybe by observing backwards through time from an alt, from these different positions or observing potential timelines from a quantum state they can come into existence so there's a lot we don't know and although this is all fringe technology now and fringe this is very fringe um, thinking that you're hearing from me I think this is something we have to start looking at we have to start looking at the possibility that we are dealing with a futuristic either futuristic alien technology that's in the galaxy with us or it's it's ourselves far in the future or f from far in the past even or a different timeline we don't know different dimension we, we don't know but this may be what we're encountering so in summary for my long rambling here I think what we're dealing with here is some type of advanced human civilization in the future using cybernetic computers that have quantum can have in, in infinite number of quantum states of perceptions of different realities of timelines and different outcomes that it can alter and change timelines and one thing they're doing is they go back in time to take a sample whatever that means so that in fact they can alter the timeline of whatever their own timeline different timelines different outcomes and by doing that they're able to have a better outcome from themselves we 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 don't live in that reality now where you can alter time you know you may be able to alter the temperature of the room you may be able to alter the structure of the room alter the structure of the earth you know dig a uh, dig a trench build a house but we don't really know how to do something with the time envelope that we're in we're all in the grasp of time and maybe this advanced civilization knows how to alter time just like we know how to alter structures and space and temperatures and lighting we, we do all these things to alter our environment, to augment our environment, but what if we could alter our environment by changing the time element events that led us here? Say, you know, if I alter this time a little bit, just like I'm changing the temperature on the room, or I'm changing the, uh, the light, I, I'm, it's, it's brighter in here, it's warmer in here, and those are very primitive things that we can do, but this civilization may be able to alter the element of time itself, and from that, they can affect massive change. You know the room would literally reorient it itself. Um, the you know the 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 structure of a person's brain could reorient it itself. You could gain knowledge because you could alter time, and in that timeline, there's certain things that you would suddenly you you would you would you would not experience it. And, I, and this and I'll be quite on this point, but I had a medical procedure today, and. Uh, you could choose to have uh, the the you could choose to have uh, 
the anesthesia or not, and I chose not to have the anesthesia because I was reading the anesthesia effect, and it said that you know you could have some memory, you could in fact uh, maybe uh, experience the pain, and it seemed that what they were giving you was a medically induced amnesia. So like the Rendlesham event, that seems that there seemed to be some type of of amnesia. And that got me thinking that with our technology, we can alter a person's perception of time, their memory of time. We can definitely say, you won't remember what happened to you. So, you know, these cases where people are given drugs and they can't remember what happened to you. Well, I was at the hospital today and that absolutely can happen. They can alter you so you don't have any memory. So, in the case of myself, I, with all the patients around me, I'm the only patient other than the medical teams that remembered more or less what happened to me. Everyone else probably doesn't have a good memory. They, they may remember going in. They may have vague memories. Everyone's a little different. So again, the outcome is changed because the memory was basically tampered with. I, I remember the time stream all the way through. The other patients, they have big gaps in their memory. And that may be better. Maybe some people would be traumatized. They don't want to feel the pain or discomfort. And it's better for them that they don't. Me, I'm like, no, I'll choose to experience the whole timeline. So that's what I mean. Time and memory, we can, we are beginning to be able to tamper with memory. We know how to tamper with memory in human beings through anesthesia and drugs. But maybe the actual element of time is being tampered with, altered with, uh, a, a changed by these advanced civilizations or alien or US government programs. This has been Bob Brown. These are just my musings because the Rendlesham event happened around Christmas time and this UFO incident has now been released around Christmas time. So that got me correlating those two events.